Hello everybody, I'm Alex Rojas and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So imagine that you're part of a CSI team and you want to determine a good or a very important evidence is the speed of a bullet from a gun and you want to determine, you want to set up an experiment or design an experiment that is able to measure what is that speed of the bullet coming from that gun and you say okay the speed is equals to you and I need to determine what that value of you is. And your idea is the following. You say, okay, I'm going to suspend a wooden block of a certain mass, and then I will shoot the, the bullet or my gun towards this block, and the bullet will get inside the block, and they entangle together, and once that happens, uh, they recoil um, up a certain height H. So I'm going to measure the height, the maximum height that they achieve, both of them. And from knowing the masses and knowing this uh, height, I hope that I'm, go I'm going to be able to determine this uh, speed u. So let's see what's the data. Well, I go out and measure the weight of my bullet, which is equals to 0 0.1 kilograms or 100 grams. Then the wooden block that I'm using is 1.9 kilograms. And this, hi this height h is 0 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters. And that's basically all I need in order to determine this unknown u. This is my goal. This is what I want to determine. u is my unknown. Okay, so usually the, the way to solve this problem is by breaking into two parts. The first part deals with a collision. That means the bullet... Uh, getting inside the block and stuck inside the block until it comes to rest uh, with respect to the block. That's the first part and that's uh, you're gonna solve that by using conservation of linear momentum. Here energy is not conserved during the collision because there is some friction involved and once you have friction you have some heat dissipation and that's part of the energy that is not reflect into mechanical energies. It's like kinetic energy is disappearing due to the work uh, done by the, the friction force. But uh, linear momentum is always conserved. So in this case, the initial, the total initial momentum has to be equals to the final total momentum. And the this momenta is equals, for example, the total initial momentum will be the initial momentum of the little bullet plus the initial momentum of the wooden block has to be equal to the, the final momentum of the bullet plus the final momentum of the big block. And remember the momentum itself is mass times velocity. So what is the initial momentum of my bullet? Well, it's going to be the mass of the bullet, which is m, uh, 100 grams, times its initial velocity, which is u, or the not initial velocity, the velocity right before the collision, which is u, uh, plus the m momentum of the wooden block, the initial momentum of the wooden block, that is the big M, the mass of the block, times its velocity, in this case is zero, because it was at rest, it was just there waiting for the collision, so this term disappears, which is great. Then I have that the final momentum of my system or the bullet is the mass of the bullet times the final velocity or the velocity right after oh by the way we have to make an assumption here that the collision it takes uh, basically no time is the, the the time it takes for the bullet to start entering the block until it comes to rest inside the block is a fraction of a second and the the, the wooden block is not moving during this process so we have the, mom the velocity before the collision is u and the velocity after the collision is some uh, value v. We don't know that yet. And the final momentum of the wooden block is going to be the big mass, m, the mass of the, blo uh, the block, times the velocity after the collision. Well, the bullet plus the block are entangled together and they're moving in sync. They're moving both of them together. Therefore, they have the same velocity. <coughs> And then V is going to be like a common denominator for both cases. And you can simplify this by saying that the final momentum is M plus M, uh, little M plus big M, times 
the velocity v. Well, if that is the case and your unknown is u, this is what you want to find, then u, you just do some algebra, and u is going to be equals to m, little m plus big M, divided by little m times v. And if you want to do some numbers here, little m is 0 0.1 and big M is 1.9. So 0 0.1 plus 1.9 is equals to 2 divided by 0 0.1 is equals to uh, 20. And that's the answer, right? You have that your bullet is going to uh, go 20 times faster than the recoil speed of the wood, uh, the wooden block plus the bullet. And that's it. Okay, I need to find out this V. And once I determine this V, I multiply times, tw times 20, and that will give me the value of U. But now, in order to determine V, we're going to use conservation of energy. Because once the collision is over, you have that the bullet plus block is just moving under a gravitational field and you apply or you have the conservation of energy in this case. So for the second part to determine V, you have that the initial, the total initial energy is equals to the total final energy. And you know that the total initial energy is going to be the kinetic, the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy and that has to be equals to the total initial uh, final kinetic energy plus the potential, the final potential energy. The initial kinetic energy of the system is going to be one half of the mass of the system. Well, remember that the system is uh, the little bullet plus the wooden block times the speed, the initial speed when they start moving. Well, that speed is the speed after the collision. So it's going to be V squared plus the potential energy. The potential energy will be the mass of the system, again, both masses together, times gravity, times height. What is the initial height down here when the collision is over? Well, remember that we make the assumption that this, the collision took like basically no time, so the wooden block didn't move, so there was no initial, or uh, the, the height didn't change. Therefore, the initial height is just zero. And again, this whole term cancels and uh, the in final kinetic energy well the system goes all the way up to here so okay so it is going to be one half of the sum of the masses times the velocity up here squared well it comes up all the way up till rest once stopped here has no, is, has no velocity or speed so that means it's equals to zero plus the final potential energy, which is m plus big M, times the final uh, times gravity times the final height, which is just h. And now, okay, this one also cancels, and we can rewrite this equation. Oh, by the way, uh, we have this term on both sides of the equal sign, the m plus m, and it also cancels, so it doesn't really matter at this point doesn't really matter what, what were the masses of the of my bullet plus uh, the block so we have v squared divided by 2 is equal to gh and from here I can determine v my v is equals to square root of 2 gh if we make the assumption that g, the gravity, is equal to 10 meters per second squared, we're going to have the following. v is just square root of 2 times 10, and the height is equal to 0 0.2. That is, v is equal to the square root of 2, I'm sorry, the square root of 4, therefore is just 2 meters times second. Well, if v is 2 meters times second, times second, we can now put it in here and determine that u is going to be equals to 40 meters per second. And this is my final answer. 
Well, now you show that your design actually worked just by measuring the mass of the two objects and the maximum height it achieved, uh, the, the block uh, hanging from a pendulum, you were able to determine U. But let's say you want to cross-check your numbers. Is there any other design that it might work? Well, the answer is yes. You can propose, for example, the wooden block is sitting on a frictionless table and it is attached to the wall via a spring. And it is ex the exact same problem in the sense that the first part of a problem, that means the collision part, is uh, solved by using conservation of momentum. The initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. And then once the bullet is at rest with respect to the block, then uh, the block moves and compresses the, the spring by a certain amount x. And it reaches uh, zero speed when it is uh, the maximum compression. So before we use the conservation of energy, this is the second part of the solution. And in this case, we're going to use the exact same uh, principle. It's a conservation of energy. There is no friction on the table. Therefore, the initial energy and the final energy are equal. So this is OK. My initial, my total initial energy is equal to my total final energy. In this case, we have only the kinetic energy of the system and uh, instead of being equal to uh, gravity times height uh, times the masses it's going to be only the potential energy of the spring which is equals to this and this k is a uh, is a constant is the is the elasticity constant of the of the spring and from here by measuring x let's say x is 20 centimeters just like before the pendulum went out by 20 centimeter, x is 20 centimeter as well in this case, we will be able to solve for v. So in, we cancel these one half terms, they go away, and then we will have that v is equals to the square root of kx square uh, m plus m. Of course, we also need to characterize the spring by measuring the elasticity constant k. But once we put all the numbers, this is 20 centimeter k is whatever value uh, for this spring and the masses, we will be able to get v. And from that, using the conservation of momentum, we can plug this v in here and find u. That's another way. Is there any other way? Well, the answer is yes. You can imagine that the wooden block is sitting again on the frictionless table, but it's not attached to anything uh, um, to the wall. It's actually free to fall. And what happens is that once you have the collision, the collision, the wooden block moves to the edge of the wall and then fall from the edge and hit the ground below. For this, you will need that the table itself it, uh, is at a certain height h, and there is certain distance from where the block starts free falling to where it hits the ground and that distance is t so here the same principle again conservation of momentum during the collision and once the collision was uh, took place the system the m and m will leave with a certain velocity v or speed v and it will reach the end of the table the same velocity because there is no friction here and then it will free fall and from this free fall and knowing the measuring this distance and the height h, we will be able to determine what v is, plug it back in here, and get what is uh, the value of my velocity. Great, so we presented three different designs that would allow us to determine a quantity, the speed of a bullet, which in principle could be very fast and difficult to measure just by measuring simple quantities like the mass of the bullet, the mass of the block, and some distances. Now I have a question for all of you. Do you have any other possible designs that might work in order to determine the speed of a bullet? If the answer is yes, please, uh, I would love to see them. Drop me a line, and if you have any uh, questions or problems that you want me to solve, please uh, just let me know and, and, and I'll make a video from them. Thank you for watching. Bye.